Hey nerds, this is Jared here. I think this is a hard topic for a lot of artists. So many of us struggle to get those creative engines going. I also want to preface this video by saying that just because I made this video doesn't mean that I don't struggle with creativity. I think it happens to all of us, and it'll continue to happen to all of us. But these are things that I've found that have made an enormous difference for me, and hopefully will for you too. And remember nerds, if you like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe so that you can keep seeing more content. I'll be uploading as many videos as I can. It really helps me out and I really appreciate you. So the first thing I want to talk about is surrounding yourself with other creative people. A lot of times we find inspiration in being around other people, not even creative people, just being around other people. Sharing creative ideas, discussing aspects that you really enjoy about art, talking about different techniques that can enhance our growth. These are all things that get my creative gears cranking. Especially if your goals as a creative are to com communicate expression and feeling through your art. I think this is absolutely necessary. You'll, you'll need to be able to talk about and discuss what you feel are important aspects of your work. And I think that if people are especially responsive to that, then it helps to motivate that creative thinking later on. And there are a lot of ways that we can surround ourselves with other creative people. We can go to local art groups, find art groups in your area. We can go to art classes, uh, community classes. It doesn't necessarily need to be higher education classes that cost a lot of money. We can go to galleries and exhibits. Uh, we can watch educational videos on social media, YouTube. And one that a lot of artists overlook is our loved ones. Because everyone is creative in their own way. Being able to talk about it with the people closest to us can often help the most. You just need to be able to distinguish the different kinds of artistic mediums that people use and how to adapt it to your own artistic medium. The second thing that I want to talk about is looking at inspirational art or inspiring art or art in general. <laughs> I'm a big proponent for this since I think as artists we're visual learners and we express ourselves visually. We can often be looking at a piece and a creative spark can just ignite in the back of our minds or in the forefront of our minds. The first place I go to for inspiration is ArtStation. I think a lot of people will immediately go to other typical social media platforms like Instagram or Facebook and now TikTok. But for me, ArtStation is set up in a way that focuses more on the art than the social response to the piece. I don't necessarily get distracted by how many likes a piece has on ArtStation. And I don't get distracted by what people are commenting on the piece either, because it's not in the forefront of where the piece is posted. I focus on the work and I respond to it in my head without looking for the social aspect. It helps me to concentrate on the visual aspects of a piece without any sort of distraction. ArtStation is also good because it doesn't limit format. When someone makes a post, they add whatever format they want, really. High resolution photos, a long video or a short video, 3D or 2D, and all sorts of different categories that easily separate what you want to see. If I want to take a look at concept art, I can take a look at exclusively 2D concept art. If I want to take a look at sculpture that can help to inspire me in my 2D formats, I can take a look at that as well. It's all separated and, very, and grouped very intuitively, so I'm a huge fan of looking at ArtStation. Uh, after looking here, if I don't get any creative juices flowing, I'd go to social media or uh, local galleries. Local galleries for me is sort of like a last ditch option. I'm not a huge fan of going to local galleries. Um, here, where I live at least, there's a lot of emphasis on um, more political pieces, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but I sort of try and escape all of that. My art, I think, is focused on more creative things. Um, and I don't mean that to sound snobby, but I try to use art as something that Maybe it's sort of escapism for me. It helps me to stay grounded. Um, 
I get distracted really easily going on social media and looking at all the people fighting over politics and I just don't want that to become some part of my art. And that's not to say that it can't be part of art. Uh, if people want to do that, that's totally fine for them. Uh, I just don't want it to be a part of my artwork and my expression and what I want to do with my artwork. I want it to be something fun and inspiring and uh, motivating for people. Um, something that is is truly beautiful and, and not necessarily in a conventional way either. The third thing that I want to talk about is setting goals for yourself. And I should say first that goals need to be realistic and attainable. A lot of times young artists put crazy goals like draw every day or uh, uh, draw ahead a thousand times or uh, in which that's not unattainable. It's sort of unrealistic for some people. We all have our own schedules. We all have our own way of and time frame of learning art and getting inspired. But just make sure that whenever you're setting goals that they're realistic, that they can be achieved. And you should know that because you know your own limitations. You know what time frame you're working with. You know your schedule better than anybody. Setting extreme goals for yourself can kill motivation and creativity just as fast as anything else. These goals can be really broad and I think they should stay broad because as individuals, different goals will help us with different creative patterns. For example, right now my goal for the next few years is to create artistic videos to upload on YouTube. Where my career isn't specifically artistic in a conventional way, I still want to create digital paintings. So I'm setting a goal for myself to try and post on YouTube to facilitate a creative community. It's something that helps me to grow and helps me to stay motivated in order to keep creating. That's what I want to do with this channel and it's helping me to stay motivated and to paint and draw almost every day. And that in turn really helps my creative juices, my creative engines. Other goals could be to create 50 works of art this year. That's one per week and I think it's attainable. Other goals might be showing work in a gallery or facilitating a local art group where you live building a social media presence, teaching art in various platforms, or something smaller like learning how to draw hands from imagination, learning anatomy for drawing, drawing something that you haven't drawn before every few days to stretch your artistic abilities. Goal possibilities are endless, uh, but remember to keep them reasonable, achievable, and simple. The fourth thing that I want to talk about is to follow artists that you feel like you can learn from. It's up to us to find our art parents. I really like that term, art parents. It comes from Stan Prokopenko, uh, Marshall Vandruff on a podcast called Draftsman. They talk about art parents are uh, artists that we can learn from and take style from. But it's up to us to find our art parents so that we can continue to learn and grow as artists. Uh, unlike biological parents, Art parents can be ever-changing, and I can't tell you how many artists I've learned from in my life. Artists like Bernie Wrightson, Frank Frazetta, Gary Frank, James Gurney, uh, Loish is a big one, uh, YouTube artists like Cynics Designs, Ergo Josh, Sam Yang. All their content is stuff that I find really inspiring and helps me to cr build creative engines. And don't limit yourself to one style or one artist or one medium. Learn from all kinds of people and mediums. Distinguish the things that help and inspire you right now personally in order to stay motivated and stay creative. And there's a few other minor things that I like to do to help me stay creative. And that might be a bigger thing for you as an artist than it is for me. Uh, for example, I like to listen to podcasts in my spare time. It doesn't even have to be a creative podcast, uh, but it helps me to set me on a creative path. So one of the podcasts that I really like to listen to is uh, Brandon Sanderson's podcast. He's an author of fantasy novels, and those are really, really interesting. The, the guys are really entertaining and fun. It just helps me to get my creative juices flowing. Uh, exercising five days out of the week really makes a difference in my mindset. Uh, also in my creative reflexes. I feel like I respond better when I see art. If I'm working out, 
if I'm exercising like I need to to remain healthy. Taking a couple of day break from art helps me to reset sometimes, especially when you can't really think of anything to do, you're staring at the blank canvas. Sometimes you just need to get away from it, step away, take a couple of day break and not pressure yourself, even though you have those goals, don't pressure yourself. Take a couple day break from staring at that blank canvas. Think about things that you really like, things that are creative and that inspire you, and then go back to it. Try different things. Watching TV shows with my wife and family can help me to think about creative things. But these are just a few examples for me. They might be bigger for you, but uh, those are some things that really help me to stay creative in my life. Anyways, nerds, I really hope this helps you in all of your creative journeys. I find listening to people talk about art like this really helps me, and I hope it helps you as well. I love watching YouTube videos. It's one of the biggest things that I do, especially for um, inspiring me and motivating me to do art. I really, really like watching people's speed paintings and processes, and that's one of the reasons why this channel is so focused around those two things. And hopefully it helps you guys out as well. And I hope this is a, a helpful and, and learning and growing environment for you. And remember that if you enjoy this content, uh, like, share, subscribe, <laughs> do all the stuff to see more. And I hope you guys continue to grow in your creative journeys. And we'll see you in the next video. Love you too, bye.